Hello and welcome to episode four of the forum. Hey, hello. 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 Boom. So I am Serum Lake, and I am joined by the ever-present Yasta. Hiya. Lord Ross. Hello, hello. And making his podcast debut, the infamous Wretched Hawk. Everybody's infamous on this. It's just those two. You're ever-present. I'm (laughs) ever-present. Hello. Lord Ross was infamous, and now Wretched Hawk is infamous. The sinister Wretched Hawk. You're infamous too. Rather. (laughs) Oh, thank you. First things first, as your new Wretched Hawk, or at least mm-hmm. new on the podcast, let's find out a little bit about you. First question, who the hell are you? I am a hawk that is wretched. <laughs> Hence the name. Wonderful. And what do you do here? I work here. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You turn up for I, the paycheck. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, I mainly focus on the uh, action adventure boards and dabble a bit in GD and around that area. With little things. So you're quite a familiar face on the forums, aren't you? Uh, I've been known to uh, pop up every now and then in strange places that involve cats and and (laughs) such such niceties. So I suppose really the last question I have to ask you: What are your sorts of, you know, what are your favourite sorts of games? Um, What you're okay? You're not at work. You've got the evening to yourself. You're going to play a game. Which one? I hate games. (laughs) <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Only joking. Um, oh, pretty much anything, really. At the minute, Tokyo Jungle. But um, if I ever find myself with a lot of spare time, then RPGs or uh, coming up will be when I get a chance picking up the new Need for Speed. But um, it is today. Yes, I need to get recording. I know. I need to pick it up. I really do. I want to just get my hands on it. It looks awesome. So, if you had to pick one game as your favourite of all time, which which would it be? Yeah, that, that Final Fantasy Nine. Every time, that's I always go back to that. that and put in about two hundred and fifty hours in. The rest of us, we're all like, oh, I don't know, Ooh, I don't know. No, I'd say that. Yeah, definitely, without doubt, nothing else comes close. Right. Mm. Okay. Well, that's going on the record. Final Fantasy Nine. Let's talk about what we've recently been playing. Let's try to keep it to one game each this time, fellas. So let's start with... Lord Ross. Hello. Uh, recently, I've been playing Gran Turismo 5 still. Lovely. Why have you been playing Gran Turismo 5? Because it's we... been out for ages. Do you not play new games? Well, we've got the racing month going on, so I've been joining in those events. And we've recently had the Halloween one, which I was telling mm. you about in the last podcast, if you were listening to that. It went very well. I mean, we had guys from the blog there and other nationalities joining in. It was quite chaotic, to <laughs> say was, the least. The event was on the blog, wasn't it? Is that how you got some blog guys? Because there was a blog article that maybe mentioned. We uh, we did advertise it on the blog as well, All right. so they can join in, to come into our event thread. But yeah, as it was just a normal normal race, but no rules. So I mean, you can go the wrong way, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you were saying that uh, in the mm. last podcast that damage was enabled, wasn't it? So uh, did that cause any problems? Yeah, I mean, every time I put the brake pedal on, my car did go right. Which was good when there was a turn going towards the right-hand side, mm. but when you're going left, it was... Uh, <laughs> Not so handy. Nah, it's chaotic. Okay, that's great, that's great. So, Yasta, what have you been playing recently? Uh, recently, I've been playing... Well, you, you want me to talk about Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. Is that during this point here? That would be nice. That would be nice, yeah. yeah that's the, uh, one of the most recent things that I started playing. I was on for my day off yesterday. I was playing Borderlands 2 quite a bit, but uh, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation on the Vita. Every bit a full Assassin's Creed game in portable form, finally. I think it's the first time. Yeah, I believe so. Because um, Assassin's Creed, I mean, it comes out on PS3 every year, you know, and it comes on other similar formats, including the PC. Uh, but there have been a couple of handheld and portable versions of Assassin's Creed in the past, one of which was on the PSP, and there's been a couple other on like mobile phone formats and stuff like that. And they've always they've always kind of like been very much Assassins and light a little bit. But this time you've actually got a fully fledged, full Assassin's Creed experience as far as single player goes. 
um, in the palm of your hand on the Vita using all the funny kind of like touch and stuff controls. So how does touch work its way into the game? I haven't really figured out yet to be honest actually. I've only actually used it in um, the menus. It's, ah. uh, like the tail screen, you know, touch the screen to start mm. and stuff like that. Even I, if it doesn't say touch the screen, it says press start, but you can touch the screen. How far you got into it? I'm only on like the second sequence at the moment. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I know with some of the users, because I've been keeping up with the thread on it, and they were saying like, when, once it gets to a certain point, it really, really kicks in, and it, it, you, you, then, you know, you're really into the game, but it's, yeah. you've got to get past a certain point, and then it will hit you, just how does it ever it Does it ever become like fully the whole world? Because I have, I've played like Assassin's Creed 2 and um, uh, Brotherhood, but um, first of all, I'm, I'm walking around, um, oh, what, what, what's the, what's the say? New Orleans? It, New Orleans, yeah, New Orleans. And in the second sequence, I'm in the swamps. And I'm just walking around. I'm just thinking, would it have been possible of me to have gone from New Orleans into the swamps? Really, and I'm pretty sure that the previous games did that. Mm. But I'm wondering if they're, they're mean that if they're, they mean that it opens up. I think it, I think it does open up more. Um, I'm not 100. percent I've, I've, I'll have to ask some of the users because yeah. I've not played it myself yet, so I need to yeah. get around to it at some point. But yeah, I think it opens up quite a bit. But what Assassin's Creed uh, 3 Liberation, what's new to it this time around? What is, what, what, even more so new than any kind of like touch controls or anything like that, is that um, it's a different character. It's not even like a Desmond character that you're playing as this time around. I think this, the story, I mean, the, the actual underlying, because there's usually an underlying story underneath Assassin's Creed. It's not just like the guy in, 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 in Italy during the Renaissance. It's not just him because there's, there's a guy that's sitting in a chair that's reliving these, these moments, right? But there's none of that. However, it's it's like a simulation. It's a program that's just. That's, I think you're just like some random agent or something like that. That is that's reliving the uh, the times of. Um, it's Aveline. Uh, I don't know what her second name is. It's uh, she's got a French name for a French surname. De Grand or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so so you, it's, you, it's a different character. I'm sorry, Ross. Do you play both sides then? Do you play like Assassin's Creed Three when it is? You've got the <coughs> modern day person. And oh, you, you don't know. It's, it's, don't it's, do entirely, it's entirely <coughs> like the, all the sequences that you do. Um, so it's not it's not a Desmond character. It's not one of his. It's not necessarily one of his um, ancestors. But uh, it's the first time you've played as a female character. Hmm. Um, and what is new to this is that you like abilities are affected by what clothes you are wearing. So you do a bit of dress up in this game. <laughs> now, as standard, you. Um, if, if, first of all, when you when you first control her, she's she's a little girl and it basically tells the story of how she was, I guess, separated from her birth mother, I guess. But um, the first time you're really walking around as an adult, you're wearing like a slave outfit, you know, because they, obviously it's back in the days when there was like there were slaves. And I don't know. Um, I think she's she's actually had a bit of a noble upbringing because she's also got like an actual full kind of like what what it calls a lady outfit. So you've got like the whole kind of like. David Williams when he's dressed up as a woman type outfit. <laughs> um, basically, when you're in the sleeve, you can um, you're not heavy all that heavy armored, but you can move around a lot quicker. And you can clamber over just about anything. You've got your wee kind of like stealth um, weapons as well. I think you, you have that with all of them. Uh, but you can like carry whatever weapon that you want to. But you you don't have any armor. In the as the lady, you can't really climb over anything. Um, but you can do stealth kills, and uh, you can also use bravery and charm in order to get past I guards. See. And to, to get into places that you want to, uh, that, that you wouldn't otherwise be able to. So it's a bit of experimentation with the yeah, Assassin's yeah. Creed formula. That's, That's right. That sounds really interesting. And of course, there's also the uh, the Assassin's outfit, which is the one before the armor, which can show you a bit of leg and. Uh... <laughs> well, that, 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 that's that's what charm is. That's what charm's all about. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's good. It's a, it's a great single player. Um, you can. It's easy to dip in and out of when you're on the go. It has a multiplayer, uh, which is just. Um, it's, I haven't really explored it all that much, but it's not the same multiplayer that's in the console version. It's uh, more like a, like, a, like in it's a, like in Brotherhood, you you recruited assassins and you sent them out. Mm. And things. It's, it's basically just that. There's okay. all these nodes that are based around the world and they're all connected. It's just a globe. And what you do is you, you, you put your point on each node to actually either attack it or defend it or something like that. And you've got resources, the amount of assassins that you have at your, your disposal that you can send out, really. So it's like an, oh, it's, it's a persistent online world, as it were. It's the kind of game that you would normally expect to be on like the game's web, uh, Facebook page or something like that. You know, I think, uh, I think Medal of Honor are currently doing that with Medal of Honor Nations on Battlelog and um, even Resistance had something similar to this on the Resistance website. Uh, global global warfare, global domination, or global res- I think it's called global resistance. I, think I it believe was. so. Yes. Yeah. So it's got multiplayer, which is similar to that. Oh. But I'm enjoying it overall, and it looks. I mean, it's one of the best looking games I think that we've seen on the Vita so far. Um, 
Yeah, it's great to actually see that experience in the in your hand. Well, I, I must add to this that I really want to buy it, but I've got to wait until payday. So thank you for rubbing it in my face and make me want it even more. Oh. So, Hawk, what have you been playing? You've been off quite a bit recently, haven't you, with your on your travels? So yes. Have you had much of a, a chance to play anything? Um, well, I've not been travelling much, actually. <laughs> I was kind of, but before that I had my holiday, and then it's been a lot of writing, um, which hasn't really gone anywhere yet, but will do eventually. But that's a story for another day and probably makes no sense to anyone listening right now, which is, yeah, brilliant. But anyway, um, I've been playing Tokyo Jungle quite a bit recently. I've not had as much time of it as I'd like to. I don't find I have as much time for gaming at the minute um, as I used to, but I still try and dip in and out where I can. I've got about 30 games that need to be finished. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've just been playing Tokyo Jungle. Um, for the price it's at and... For, for for what it is and for how you know it's it's one of those games that I would just say to people yeah just just do it go for it buy it even if you're unsure just do it purchase it it yeah. is worth it it's only about ten pounds isn't it on the store yeah it's it's really amazing I remember watching um, just people play it at the different expos and stuff and the feedback from other like expo exhibitions and things around the world. Um, in Japan and stuff, where people, the, the big highlight was actually Tokyo Jungle, which was a massive surprise. And when you get your hands on it, you do see why. It's just, it's there's something about it. There's a great deal of irony, nice comedy there, but there's a lot. It's actually quite testing. It's not, you know, it doesn't, it's not one of those, you know, like today's games where they literally guide you through it, make everything so easy, mm. respawn you, you know. With this, it's like a hark back to, our, to something quite yeah. old school and hardcore. It's, um, it's very Japanese as well. I mean, yeah, like that, that description is very Japanese as well. But like, obviously, the the content of the game and also oh yeah, I definitely. I mean, the whole set is. It's yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. It is very. It's got a very Japanese style to it, but it translates so easily because of what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's just that, that you've got endless amounts of replay value because of the many animals you can you can earn, the things you can open, the things you can find, constantly going back, wanting to better your scores. It, the, the way it's all been implemented and done, it's really fantastic. I just want to get more time with it, to be honest. But um, playing as a little cat or a little dog <laughs> is great fun, especially when you find a mate, which is you know, always fantastic. Just, <laughs> that's the highlight of my day, that is. But um, yeah, and just breeding, you know, you end up with like four little, you know, you've got four kittens that are then under your control, yeah. Um, I hate that point though I've got oh yeah I've got four I've got, oh, brilliant I'm going to do really well now then three of them die instantly when I come across them at gigantic <laughs> which I didn't expect around a corner I'm like oh great um, yeah this isn't going to end well and then I die and I'm like oh, I wish I'd Fantastic. saved that yeah. brilliant I'll have to start all the way from the beginning again that's one of my problems I've got, I think we've got so used to Games automatically saving and things like that, you, yeah. you kind yeah. of forget. And I'm like, oh, what have I done? That's, that's two hours to, um, gone to waste. That's very similar to the new XCOM as well. I mean, like, before you went on holiday, yes. we, uh, we, were, we were talking about XCOM quite a bit. We've already been talking about XCOM, but yeah, I need to play that. It's another game which doesn't. Uh, it gives you an option to auto save after every move, but other than that, you're just manually saving, and that's mm. throughout the whole thing. So you always need to make sure that you save at the right points and. You know, if you if you mess up, if you're if all your team dies, you know it's um, it's back to either the beginning of that mission, or if you thought that you were in a better position midway through the mission, then it'd be better to mm. to save then, really. So it sounds like a bit like that. I do. I need to play that. I do like XCOM. You should uh, for future videos that we do, we should do an XCOM one from the PS One days. That'd be oh, amazing. The PS One. Well, can I say this that we've got something lined up with XCOM? Uh, we're, we're 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 trying to get something out the door with XCOM. Um, and it does involve a bit of video content as well, really. But, uh, but I don't want to tease it too much, just in case that kind of falls through. Yeah, okay. Well, keep your eyes peeled. We'll hopefully have something soon. Um, so I suppose actually it's my turn to talk about what I've been playing. Yeah, what you've been playing. Yeah. Ah, well, as ever, I'm just so busy. I very rarely get a chance to play anything. But I've had a quick go on WWE 13. Uh, as everybody is probably aware every year THQ releases a wrestling game and you know some people argue that there are very little changes from each game much mm. like I said the same thing about FIFA and Call yeah. of Duty well. and anything that's annual <laughs> yeah exactly to the uninitiated there aren't very many changes but to those that follow the series you know it's a colossal change um, the biggest feature in this one is that rather than having uh, the traditional story mode it has something called the Attitude Era mode, where you basically go back and play the top storylines from the 1990s wrestling. Mm -hmm. So okay. featuring Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker and Kane, 
The Rock, uh, DX. Put Hitman Hart. Bret Hart is in there, yes, he's in, <laughs> he's in one of the storylines. In fact, the infamous Montreal <coughs> screw job, where uh, they basically went against the script, they ended the match early and uh, stole the title off the guy and said, right, that's it, go on, you're leaving, goodbye. Brilliant. That's, that's actually in there. That's mm. kind of cool, actually, mm. to put that in there. Yeah, they, they look back on it with good humour now, but back, <laughs> back then there was a source of uh, a lot of hate and resentment and tears and bad blood, but it's all resolved now. So much so they can put it in a video game, so <laughs> great. <laughs> but, you know, if you're a fan of, of wrestling, or even if you're a fan of you know, the, the Attitude Era style wrestling, the more hardcore, I'd recommend giving it a try because it's, it's quite refreshing going back and reliving some of those classic moments. Mm. I, did like, I did use to like some of the older games back on the PS1, early PS2 days, so mm. I'd like to give it a try, give it a whirl. I recommend it. It's good fun. And there's just so much scope for user-created content in there as well because you can make your own wrestlers, your own TV show, uh, your own title belt. And in the WWE Universe mode, it's kind of like an organic storyline mm -hmm. where, depending on what you do in your matches, the storyline evolves and you're given like branching paths. So say you're having a, a tag team match and your partner, who is controlled by the computer AI, uh, gets pinned and costs you the match you're given the option you know help him up pat him down mm. say don't worry we'll, we'll do better next time or you could beat him up <laughs> <laughs> and turn like on him and then suddenly the storyline branches off that you're no longer a tag team pursuing the tag team titles now you're in a bitter rivalry <coughs> with, your, with your former partner that's, that's pretty good actually that sounds quite different yeah it is it's a lot of fun I, I look forward to spending more time with it Okay, guys, now it's time to talk about what's going on in our community. Uh, let's start with Hawk. What, what's going on with you guys? With me? Mm. Um, lots of different competitions and ongoing things like the Action Adventure Caption Competition mm. and other little contests. If you go into the Action Adventure section, you'll see them all on the side panels. Um, there's stuff for, like, you know, Assassin's Creed, uh, Metal Gear Solid... Um, but you, I, I, I try and make sure that if you enter one, you'll, you'll see where the others are. So they're quite visible, they're there, and you should enter because there's actually some really cool stuff that I'm um, giving away at the minute in the action adventure sections. Are you still giving away that signed picture of Nolan North? Oh yeah, that was one of them um, in the Uncharted section. Um, I think that ends on the 7th. <laughs> So, Not much time left. No. So if you're hearing this around the 7th, sorry, tough luck, probably already been won and you haven't got a chance, but <laughs> post anyway and we'll just laugh at you. Not really, I'm joking. But um, feel free to enter the other contests and stuff. I've got quite a few different ones going. I think that's because some of the games that have come out, you know, it just made sense, especially with like the Assassin's Creed. You can actually win a copy of the game. Mm. So if you've gone to your store and uh, they've all gone, you could win a beautiful copy for nothing just by entering. So, yeah, there you go. Brilliant. That's a wonderful plug right there. Okay, Lord Ross, I expect you're going to tell us about Community Racing Month again. I yeah, certainly will, yeah. Please, um, the floor is yours. Well, you know, the other day I had the uh, Go Karting, which is every Thursday, mm -hmm. and I got my first point of the season. Oh. oh you know. <laughs> uh, I came sixth place, and that's, that's why you get your point. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Well, uh, anyway, so that, you know, that's still going strong. Um, we're having some lag issues here and there, but I mean, the last one, most recent one, it went quite well. I mean, there wasn't any lag at all, so that's going good. Uh, we do have, I am about to launch, no, in fact, I have launched uh, my surprise competition, which is a big one, and that's to win the Gran Turismo jacket. It's a zip hoodie, but what makes it special is it's signed by... The CEO uh, and producer of Poly... Not Polygon, what are they called? Polytronic, is it? Polyphony. Polyphony. <laughs> Polyphony, uh, yeah. Polyphony, uh, Polyphony. Yeah. yeah. So if you, want, if you like him, you like Gran Turismo, definitely get involved in that competition. I'm looking for decent answers. Uh, basically, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I want good answers, good, clean, fun well, answers. They must be decent. <laughs> well, all I'm looking forward to share your memories, you know, and experiences of the Gran Turismo series. So, you know, it doesn't have to be Gran Turismo 5, it can be on the PS1, PS2. You know, it, it could be funny, humorous, 
or even emotional, let us know. Okay then, I'll let you know of my memories, <laughs> all of them. Yasta, your turn, what's going on? Uh, so I want to take this uh, little <coughs> segment here to plug the Battlefield Sundays, Battlefield 3 Sundays. This weekend, um, hopefully this podcast will be up before Sunday evening. Yes. Hopefully, yeah. Yes. Um, it is the first anniversary of Battlefield Sundays, an event which is still going strong, still gets all the people in, still run every Sunday um, on a dedicated server by um, Thingamabob. Well, that's the thing. Um, those that do part uh, in previous months made me remember that the event was organised by Fiske, one of our yeah. old MVPs. He has had to sort of give up his MVP duties because he is uh, concentrating on his career a bit at the moment. Um, so I'd like to give thanks to... And I, people love to hear their names read out on this podcast, by the way. That's something that I've really discovered. So I need to make sure I pronounce this guy's name correctly. Is it Simber? <coughs> Simber? Simber? Oh, the Danish guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. Simber. Yeah. So thanks very much to Simber for carrying on this legacy of Battlefield Sunday. So, uh, you were awesome in The Lion King. As well. Ah yes, 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 yes. Uh, and if you're worried about uh, whether or not you're you've got you've got the right DLC for the match, then you know hit up the thread at Battlefield Sundays. It's one of the stock threads at the top of the Battlefield forum. Because um, sometimes they set up separate different rooms, sometimes even at different times of the day on Sunday to uh, accommodate you if you don't have certain bits of DLC. So if you've just got the standard maps, then don't worry. Um, just um, hit them up in the thread and find out where and when. Uh, we can suit your needs and have you playing with us lovely people. And while, while you're at it, join the um, the uh, OPC Battlelog platoon for Medal of Honor on um, battlelog.medalofhonor.com. Just search for um, official PlayStation EN or OPC and you'll be able to find us. Wonderful. Okay, well, with me, the only thing I've really got going at the moment, I'm a little bit between events. Uh, but I'm actually going to start up a WWE wrestling league. Uh, I'm going to create uh, an OPC, uh, basically television show with OPC titles, and I'm looking for people to sign up to wrestle for the titles. And uh, if you win the title match, you get to keep the belt. And but you'll have to defend it because nobody likes a champion that avoids fights. That's basically all I have to say on the matter. <laughs> it's in the planning stages. It's going up soon. Sounds like fun. We're wrestling. I think I might set up like a Medal of Honor event or something. Mm. Maybe try and get Ellie Clannell on board of that. Dean Atlantic, you know, get them to do a bit of work. We're dropping names there. Yeah. They'll, they'll be so happy. They'll be so happy. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of dropping names. Lachlano, he, he loves the way that we pronounce that name, Lachlano. Has he got a question? He has, we're going on to community questions. Now last week uh, we actually asked for any feedback you guys had. We've had some really useful stuff. Hopefully you've noticed the changes we've made. Hopefully. Uh, but we've also had a few questions from the users. So, uh, <coughs> let's see. <clears throat> Speaking of L.A. Clennell, he asks... La Clennell. <laughs> L.A. Clennell. La Clennell. Monsieur Clennell. La Chanel. <laughs> he asks... Which ski mod is the biggest bragger, in your opinion? Let's start, Ross. Who's the biggest bragger? From the skiing forum. I don't think it's me. I think I'm, I'm very modest. <laughs> is, he talking about, modest. Is, is he talking about just us in this team, or is he talking the extended community team? Uh, it could mean any of them. Let's yeah. just take it with our team. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Who's the biggest bragger on our team? Mm. Are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> this is a difficult question. I think it might be me. I think I usually like to rub it in. People's faces. Okay, so the answer in, in the rear event. If Envisager it. counted as a mod, <laughs> <laughs> see, I'd say myself, but that might be seen as bragging, so I won't do that. <laughs> Disqualified. Oh. <laughs> so the answer to the question: general agreement. None of us. None of us. None, None of us. us yeah. We don't really like to no. brag all that much, despite what I said earlier. We're far too modest. Far too mod modest. Yes. Modest. Yeah, <laughs> modest. Okay, our second question from Corsten97. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. If not, it's Coast. He, he, I, I, once again, I read him writing in the thread about how to pronounce his name. Hello, Corsten. Corsten97. Being the 50th anniversary of James Bond, what is your favourite film? Presumably Bond film. And who is your favourite Bond? Let's start with Hawk. You're a movie lover. <sighs> Tough one. Yeah, I suppose you can have to... 
it would have to be, I'd say, Daniel Craig. I, I Just from, not from the last one, but from the newest um, and the first one, is it? It's just, he's set such a high standard redder. I can't see it going downhill. Um, I can only see it going further. Imagine how many more he's, that they've got with him, you know. The, how many more? Uh, left, yeah, how many more left with <laughs> him more? In. How many were there more? Well, but, um, <laughs> no, I, yeah. I, uh, Quite enjoyed the first one with him in and um, Casino Royale. Yeah, I think I think it dipped. There was a slight point where it, where it might have gone a bit too long, but that seems to be a current trend in quite a lot of films. Um, but I think it set an amazingly high standard. And it just it gave you an idea of what was to come. And the most recent one, I mean, Skyfall. It, it, yeah, have you, have you, you here have seen that? You've seen it, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, Rogers has seen that on the ticket. You've seen it. As I well. I went to watch it um, Wednesday night, and I got to the cinema. And because I'd been held up here from doing my mega quiz night, which was huge, and watch out for Christmas's mega quiz, by the way, um, I got there, and the only tickets they had left were front row. So I just said no, because I, cause it's one of them screens where you write up close, to, to, you're too close to the screen. So, so you're, you're having to the cup. Really yeah. Hurt, hurt, hurt so head. I didn't get to watch it, and I'd been looking forward to that all day. And I blame all the users who played in the quiz and won, <laughs> and possibly my miscounting all the... All the uh, numbers they'd got the scores. So you didn't, you didn't see me to blame, one. really. No, I didn't. So I've still got to go and watch it, right. and it will be a few days it's until I get a chance. It. I mean, it's outstanding. Yeah. Well, I've seen so much. I feel like I've seen the film. This is one of the current trends with well, films I hate. You know, the trailers. Oh, I watch this trailer, that trailer, and before you minute, you know, you've seen. I don't the watch best trailers. Film. I mean, I try to, especially a film try and like avoid that. them. I avoid anything I can. Yeah. So I go in there, no but, expectation. But from what's been shown and. What I've heard, you know, it's a huge step forward, so that's why I'm really annoyed I couldn't watch it. So, Yasti, your favourite? I have only ever seen the Daniel Craig Bond films. Blimey. Really, despite, despite my old age. Um, so, I would have to say him. And as for all those films, I haven't seen the new, I haven't seen Skyfall yet, but um, I guess yeah, <coughs> Casino Royale. Ross, quickly. Uh, <laughs> think uh, I would say I still I still quite like John, Sean Connery actually mm. I still I still enjoyed his Bond films although Daniel Craig is doing really well on his recent ones mm. yeah. always, there will always be some good good old ones I mean, I've been watching them on the 007 channel on Sky there's quite a lot of cheesy films of James Bond <laughs> didn't realise how cheesy ones. they were but I mean yeah Roger Borg the little jokey stuff he's going on about George Lazenberg <laughs> gone but not forgotten okay so and you my answer uh, I'm going to say Sean Connery and I think my favourite one <laughs> to be honest I don't feel strongly enough about Bond movies to have a particular favourite but I'll, I'll just say Goldfinger because you know, that's a classic boom mm. done right okay our final question comes <coughs> from Irish Viper and he says yesterday I was playing Killzone HD and loving it I might add and whilst playing, I had a snack, which was a Snickers bar, and it reminded me of the last chocolate bar I had some years ago, known as a marathon. So my question is, how can companies get away with stealing recipes from one another? They were more or less identical in every way. Now, well, Yester, I believe you have an answer for this question. It's not really got a lot much to do with gaming or Killzone, which he mentions earlier on in the question. Mm. And also, he, I mean, how long, do, how long was, he, like, eating, was he not eating chocolate for? Good 20 years. <laughs> That's a good 20 years, that is right there. Eh? Well, uh, to answer your question, um, the chocolate bar that, is, that used to be called Marathon is now called Snickers, which uh, was to bring uh, the brand in line with what it's called in other parts of the world. Shocking. Like, like Opal Food and Starburst. Yeah, it's just, they call it that in America. And that's my sensible answer to your question, but he's obviously trolling. He's, he's trolling, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But we did say we would answer any questions that were asked. Yeah, so. oh, there you go. We've given you a really boring answer. Not as... Not as, not as um, not as interesting as the uh, the answer that I gave in the sort of production meeting that we had before this, <coughs> also known as our team meeting. <laughs> On a related note, is anyone annoyed that Freddo frogs are like twenty p and not ten p, or is that just me getting older and? Getting I thought they were fifteen p. They're fifteen. Well, I, 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 I thought they used to be fifteen p. They should be ten. Mm. It's more of a curly wordy fan, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't had one of those in years. What are they? Forty five pence. Curly ten p, I think. Oh, they were. Oh, I want to go. I want to go down the road to Cyber <laughs> Candy now and just try all the some more foreign chocolates and That's stuff. Just down the road. Where, where, yeah. where exactly is that? Because like Covent Garden. I'm really oh, hoping Covent they get in the um, Japanese Pepsi White. Mm. 
It looks, I, I don't know what it tastes like, but it just looks amazing. They've got little like snowmen on the front and stuff. Oh, I, I love getting hold, being in London, one of the great things is being able to get hold easier of uh, foreign chocolates and sweets and stuff. So I'm swung one of the English ones. Hmm? I'm swung one of the English. There's nothing wrong with them, but I just like to sample them. It's good to broaden the palate. Okay, our final section <coughs> is Name the Clip. Now, last week we played a little clip from Killzone HD, and I believe it was Raving Zombie. Was that who got it right? Is that his username? Yes. Uh, well, there is somebody called Raving Zombie, but I don't I know if you want I believe he got it right, and I, yes. I sent him a little prize, which wound up being a Mass Effect 3 t shirt. And if it wasn't Raving Zombie, then congratulations to Neil Rinza Cookin, because I always get them mixed up. And he, <laughs> he wins everything. Yeah. A Pac-Man owner, he probably won something as well. After the, the roaring success of last week's Name the Clip, it's time for our latest clip. So all you need to do is listen to this, and then on the forum thread where the podcast is hosted, just tell us where it's from, and I'll see if I can send you a little something. Isn't this a school night? So that's about it from episode four. All that's left to do is thank the guys for turning up. So thank you, Hawk, for turning up. Hope it hasn't been too painful. No, no, not not that painful. Um, quite nice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we were easy on him. Thanks, Yasta. That's what she said. Yeah, that's okay, that's okay. That's what, that's what I said as well. There we go. Lord Ross, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Serum Lake. You're welcome, Serum Lake. Don't forget that the podcast is now available on iTunes. Just search for the Forum Community Podcast and we should be the top of the list. If you could rate us and subscribe to us, that would be fantastic. Also, if you've got any sort of feedback for us or questions, head over to community.eu.playstation.com where you can leave us all sorts of wonderful remarks and follow the amazing discussions we've talked about today. Boom. Done. <laughs>